I would now like to invite Honorable Justice and Member of Lokayuk Bihar, Justice Mihir Kumar Chha for the Presidential Address. Can you please have a round of applause? Mr. Well, a topic which needs no elaboration beyond what has already been said by in the keynote address by Mr. Balakrishna. Yes, it's a fact of life that food either is in plenty or is not available to anyone of them. I don't know how transparent this can be or how the situation can be derived, but the life that we are having. Did we ever imagine that the mindset for the individual comes from the home? It is the basic training that you get in your home in your early days that makes you this happen. I'll give you two examples and then I will be making it clear. My father got, I mean, we belong to a very um, average middle class family and my father got married in 1951. Look, my, my father had lost his mother in very, very, very early childhood, so he was, had no training as to when he goes, get married and then he goes to Satura and how he has to eat. So, as the tradition goes in Mithila, that the, an area where they serve food like hell. Um, many times, 56 times or 100 times, so they will take a prayer in this. So it was served on him on the first day and then my father, as his habit was, he finished all of it. So the next day, my um, grandmother my nanny and all, they thought probably that he has his hungry or something more of it. So second day it was given both. There is a function on the fourth day, which is known as in our marriage family, that's Chaturthi. So there, on fourth day, the girl is supposed to eat from that leftover by the husband. That's the tradition. So the fourth day my father was almost going to finish the whole thing again. Then my grandmother got hold of that is what are you doing? I mean, she said, why? I can't waste food. So that story of, he then was said that no, there is a tradition that the girl has to eat from your left over and that is how the love increases and all what not. So that was once. And I'm talking this happened in 1951. So what training he had. And let me give you another incident in my family, which I saw. With my sister, younger to me, but then they're just there. She got married in 1970. We had a family boy who was coming from a rural background. In BMCH, she was a medicine student, a second, third year student. Our, in our family management used to be at that point that was quite early. My sister got married in 16. So, when we were serving food to our son, I mean the Damaji and all, traditions again followed the same way. But then no and we won't be found that boy every day living food for this. In our training that we had in our all five of us, that was something unseen, unheard. So third day or fourth day we asked him, that why do you have a habit of leaving the food? Then he comes out with a very clear that I have a instruction to my mother, don't eat whole of it, otherwise you will think that you are starving. That's my idea of coming with these two stories that I had in mind was to just to tell you, the mindset has to change. The children will have to make it believe that whatever food is given to you, and as I rightly said by Mr. Vinkan Swami, Mr. Balakrishnan, Mr. Mr. that 
if you believe in any any of the religion, irrespective of Hinduism, Polyphony, food is Brahma and all that thing. It is in any religion the food has its importance, the food has been given the due recognition and that is how you find all the charities begin with the food itself. Idea which I was very sincerely taking and which I was coming to my mind when uh, Mrs. Roshni Singh came to me and for this topic. Normally we keep avoiding all this because on a public platform for a person to belong to a different spectrum. I do not take it as I am because a lot of things have to make up where your personal views are being judged on your nationalistic view or your patriotic view. Uh, but then I thought this topic is the worst topic to my mind, very close to my heart and will not invite any controversy. But then at the same time, having almost spent two-third of my life in the legal profession, I was just wondering whether we give to our constitution itself be the people of India. What the people of India have got in return on the food of crime? How do we approach the food problem over there? There is a right to liberty, there is a right to equality, there is a right to live decent life, right to life, Article 21, Article 14. There is a right to principle under the state of Article 47. But what prevents or what still not is coming in the mind of the people who can make the change at the highest level is that right to food should be made a fundamental right. The right to get food will be, well, it is all said right to decent life will probably include right to get food. Like the Jasmala, recently I, in 2013, I read a judgment where the Siddhi Mishra has killed down Chief Justice of India. He spoke for the Supreme Court. It said that if any complaint comes, it is a public interest litigation, where you came, then anything which comes out and the food preservation in it, the mechanism has to improve that why it will not be given the guarantee that we have under Article 21. Yes, we had to find out something as a via media to say this. But why not have a fundamental right that every citizen in India will have access to the food? You have no difficulty in coming to this. But the, we have a right now something like uh, in the last uh, uh, Days of the Congress, we think we've not heard something about a food security bill or something like that. What was that? And how do you how do you get into the real problem? Still, you walk down to the rural area, you find out how difficult it is for them to have a two-square meal. If they have roti, then they don't have a sabji for it. If they have something like a Force food which we, we do not even know how to eat, those grains are available to them. This is how the poverty has been. And you know, I mean, Mr. Bayakrishnan could have said better about it, but then, as my knowledge goes, among the hunger stricken people in the world, we are at the bottom. Something like ranking 110. And we still claim that we have uh, overproduction or we are fully food, fully food saturated people and where, where do we go? So this, as rightly said, the approach of individual towards the food, consumption, preservation, storage, that would be one aspect. The organizational approach which again involves the social and the, the government's concern that even for that. There should be something, I mean, Mrs. Paul will tell tell you more in detail that large number of food collection in the warehouses or in the state have warehouses corporations have gone west. Many people have lost their job that you did not save those. Those managers, food managers have lost their job because of the discontent they committed with. But then what is the mechanism ultimately derived out of it? Who goes and checks every day or every week, every month? These are the problem areas where we will have to address too. Apart from, yes, what was said as a personal habit grown by Mr. Bharat that he collected a food packet and gave it to someone. 
But those stray incidents will not make a change. The change can come from within, the change can come from, from, from the compulsive nature of either legislation or the action that the executive has to take. There has to be something like a mindset of the people and a, even a fear element that if I waste food, I can be punished. If I waste food, I can go. These are some of the things which come in mind and I am sure you are having a seminar on it. It's wonderful to have a discussion on this and you have got a balance together. Many people from different branches are here and they will have to be sharing their views. I for one stand for your cause and I stand saying yes, never waste a moment. Thank you, thank you.